This book is read with permission from Simon & Schuster and is meant for educational purposes only during this time of distance learning. Hi kiddos, this book is called The Music of Life, Bartolomeo Cristofori and the Invention of the Piano. In Padua, Italy, Bartolomeo Cristofori's home since his birth, a hush envelops the room as the instrument maker carefully adjusts the tuning pins of a clavichord. Feet pad across the room, cloth rustles, sand falls silently through an hourglass. Cristofori treasures the quiet so he can coax just the right notes from the delicate instrument. He strikes a key firmly, and inside the clavichord, a small metal strip presses a string. A pitch-perfect pianissimo note trembles out. In the garden, starlings chatter, nearly overpowering the soft sound. So there's Cristofori and his clavichord, and the sound it makes is pianissimo, which means very, very Outside, a parade of pounding hooves and clattering wooden wheels grows closer and closer, louder and louder. Horses whinny, snort and stamp as a young prince and his entourage spring from the carriages onto the cobblestones. His Highness Prince Fernando de Medici. Word of Cristofori's gift for tuning and restoring keyboard instruments has spread throughout the land. The prince, an accomplished musician, has come to examine Cristofori's work for himself. So you see there's the prince coming. And this word up here is crescendo. Say it with me, crescendo. And that means getting louder and louder and louder. Cristofori shows the prince to a harpsichord, a keyboard instrument that plucks stiff strings. Fernando sits and begins to play. Forte notes, strong and loud, ring out. Prince Fernando yearns for his court to become the musical center of Italy. He urges Cristofori, come to Florence and join my court. Cristofori is torn reluctant to leave the quiet and peace of Padua. So there's the prince with the harpsichord and that word up there is forte. Say it with me, forte. And forte means loud. But the prince makes an offer Cristofori cannot refuse. A house complete with all the furnishings he could need, very generous pay, 12 scudi a month, and an important position the master instrument maker and tuner. Best of all, Cristofori would be able to work with the most elegant keyboards in Italy and have the chance to build some beautiful new ones of his own. So Cristofori sets off to Florence. When Cristofori arrives, he installs his work table in the long row of the famous Medici workshops alongside the most talented stone engravers, goldsmiths, lathe workers, tapestry weavers, and potters of the region. How different it is from his workshop at home. Wool beaters thump and looms clatter clack. ka -chunk goes the printing press. The cabinet makers saw and bang endlessly. Cristofori can't hear himself think. Even worse, he can barely hear the instruments he is trying to tune. So this is the workshop. All the other people, and it is so loud for him. And this word up here is fortissimo. Say it with me, fortissimo. And fortissimo means very loud. 
So Cristofori moves his workshop out of the hubbub and into his own house. He planes boards and saws keys as a fire crackles in the hearth. He glues joints as tin plates clink in the kitchen. He tunes strings as a nearby fountain splashes joyfully. See there, he's working in his workshop, making all the pieces of the instruments by hand. And the word up here is decrescendo, which means getting quieter. And then poco a poco, which means little by little. Bells toll and clang and chime, ringing in the dawns, the days, the weeks, and the years, as Cristofori restores 16 of the prince's keyboard instruments and builds, from scratch, nine more. The prince and the people of Florence find Cristofori's work to be masterful, but for Cristofori, his creations are not good enough. The harpsichords and clavichords he restores and builds can only do so much. See, he's making the instruments from scratch. For no matter how gently a musician place, place, presses the keys, when the harpsichord plucks its strings, the sound is loud, always loud. There's the harpsichord with all the strings and its forte, which is loud. And no matter how vigorously a musician presses the keys of the clavichord, when its tiny metal strips tap the strings, the sound is soft. So very soft. And this is the clavichord. You see how she's hitting it and it's still very soft, pianissimo. Neither instrument can start sotto voce, like the whispered gossip of neighbors and build up to an angry argument. No one can play a pounding march, then drop down to a lovely lullaby. There's no way to surprise listeners with a few feathery or furious notes. As Cristofori ponders his problems, he delivers harpsichords to the Medici's pity palace for concerts in the gardens. There he marvels at great stone statues, how sculptors he once worked beside have brought marble to life. Concerts in the garden. And if you look, it says, Mezzo piano, say it, mezzo piano. Mezzo means medium, so mezzo piano is medium soft. Cristofori lugs the harpsichords to the prince's favorite villa outside the city for concerts in the theater. There he admires the prince's room of small paintings by great masters, how artists have evoked a moment in time with just colors and lines. Cristofori accompanies harpsichords to Pratolino, the prince's summer residence, for magnificent operas. There, Cristofori hears violins, violas, and voices rising from a hushed whisper to a bellowing bravado, capturing all that a person can feel. How much can be expressed with stone and paint and bows on strings? If only Cristofori's keyboard instruments could so fully express the music of life. The instrument maker yearns to create a new keyboard instrument, one that can be played as softly as a gentle rain and as loudly as a booming thunderstorm. But how? Cristofori wanders the streets and workshops of Florence. All around him, hammers rise and fall go the tiny hammers of the goldsmiths and silversmiths. Tap, tap, the sculptor's mallet strikes. Bang, bang, the blacksmith's sledgehammer pounds. Even in the piazzas, hammers dance above dulcimers, filling the air with a rich range of sounds. Maybe hammers are the solution. But what should the hammers be made of? Wood, paper, leather? Cristofori scours the bulk bustling markets of Florence for a variety of materials. With the clink of gold florins, he pays the shopkeeper. 
So we already talked about crescendo means getting louder and louder. And you're seeing the hammers. And this here is mezzo forte. So if mezzo means medium and forte means loud, it means medium loud. And this is the instrument called the dulcimer where you play by hammering on strings. Back at his workshop, Cristofori wonders, what would be the best design for the hammers? He experiments, carving the wood carefully. The hammers begin to take shape, wide at the base and narrow in the middle. The hammers will strike stretched out strings, he decides. But what kind of strings? Brass, steel, gut, or gold? The string should be strong enough to endure pounding, but still vibrate richly. For a warm, clear tone, he chooses brass and stretches the strings tightly across a strong cypress sound board. So see here you can see the hammers and the strings stretch off across the wood board. Now the instrument maker faces the toughest challenge of all. How can the musicians change the volume simply by varying the pressure on the keys? Cristofori experiments with different ways for the keys to control how fast and how forcefully the hammer swing. At first the hammers strike too hard and they break the strings and then they tap too softly to be heard. They sometimes even rebound and strike the note twice. Finally, Cristofori crafts a clever solution. Now pressing a key, flings a hammer at the string. Immediately, the hammer falls back and is caught, poised to play again. The inventor assembles a long row of keys, hammers, and strings in a sturdy wooden case. So if you see right there, that's the mechanism that he invented where it hits the strings and then it falls back quietly. Cristofori gazes at his masterpiece, which is covered in red leather, lined with green taffeta and trimmed with gold ribbon. On the outside, it looks just like any other harpsichord, but inside is the marvelous new mechanism. What will his patron think of it? This is always my favorite picture because I would love a red piano. Finalmente, in 1700, Bartolomeo Cristofori unveils his new invention. Prince Fernando sits before the instrument. He taps a key slowly and gently and the sound is so soft and sweet. He presses the keys harder and faster and the notes ring out loud and clear. The prince plays a peaceful lullaby, a joyful jingle, and a rollicking round. It is possible to play both piano, soft, and forte, loud, a court musician marvels. The prince calls him a virtuoso. Cristofori bows, full of pride, Cristofori's wonderful invention is eventually named for what it can do. It is called the pianoforte. Cristofori is pleased, but he is not done. For years, he tinkers endlessly with his pianoforte, making the mechanism smoother and even more responsive. But the keyboard is so sensitive, musicians struggle to play it. If you hit a key a little too hard, dong, or too soft, ding, and the volume follows. The more responsive Cristofori makes his instrument, the more reluctant his musicians are to play it. Undaunted, Cristofori spends the rest of his long life perfecting his invention, coaxing it to respond precisely to a musician's touch. He hopes that someday someone will use it to capture the music of life.
a few royal courts by Cristofori's amazing pianoforte, but still the harpsichord reigns as the most popular keyboard instrument in the land. And before he is able to see his instrument embraced widely by musicians, Bartolomeo Cristofori dies in 1732 at the age of 76. And the word up there is morendo, which means dying away. But Bartolomeo Cristofori's invention lives on. An article about his amazing instrument is published in Germany, and an organ maker there begins crafting new pianofortes. The instrument slowly spreads across Europe. There's the maker in Germany making a new one, and the words at the top are dal niente, out of nothing. Musician Joseph Haydn tries a pianoforte for the first time. Its responsiveness lights his imagination on fire. In a concert in 1777, the young virtuoso Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart dazzles an audience with the instrument's expressive possibilities. From that moment on, Mozart and countless others compose all their keyboard music for the pianoforte. So here's Haydn playing the pianoforte, and it says crescendo, growing louder. And then over here, this is Mozart playing it, and it says molto crescendo, becoming much louder. Cristofori's invention eventually becomes simply the piano, because a po and it becomes a powerful tool in the hands of brilliant composers everywhere. Johannes Brahms' piano soothes you to sleep. Ludwig van Beethoven's piano rings out, rousing and full of joy. Scott Joplin's piano dances. Clara Schumann's piano sings. Claude Debussy's piano makes moonlight. And today, all around the world, in the hands of countless musicians, young and old, Bartolomeo Cristofori's piano captures the music of life. So this picture is all kinds of other musicians and composers who all make the piano sound very different. And the reason they can do that is because of Bartolomeo Cristofori, who invented the pianoforte that we call the piano now. And that is a painting of him. I hope you enjoyed the story and learned something. Please go listen to the other links and answer a few questions for me.